This is Valley News Live at noon. We're following a developing story for you. Good afternoon, I'm Anna Johnson. Several schools in the Valley are on high alert today after a TikTok trend called for widespread school violence. Fargo police say they are aware of the threat and had increased patrols around school buildings this morning. Many police departments across the country are doing the same. We also heard from Beltrami County Sheriff's Office, which says there's no evidence to suggest that any violent incidents will occur locally, but they are still investigating and had extra patrols at schools this morning. An increased presence was also seen at Roseau area schools and Moorhead public schools are aware and are in contact with local law enforcement. It's definitely a lot colder than earlier this week, but we may be in for a small weekend warm up. Nathan has the details. Nathan. Yeah, that's right, Anna. We're watching for a very small weekend warm up. We got to get past a little weather hiccup here on our Friday. And we're starting to see that weather hiccup at this hour. This is our Dakota Magic Casino Skycam. Notice some snow flurries flying. Can hardly see the interstate from the casino parking lot. So seeing some light snowfall making its way through, but it's enough to reduce those visibilities. And it's that light fluffy stuff uh, that we're seeing with it being so dry and uh, uh, not much moisture in the system. But it's enough to make for some slippery roadways that we're tracking for you here. Uh, this hour. So here's what we're watching, of course, for this Friday snow is that uh, yes, it's going to be mainly south of I-94 in the Highway 10 corridor. Uh, it's going to be light, fluffy stuff that we're seeing with blowing and drifting possible. And uh, it's uh, because uh, it's such a light, fluffy snow. We're watching for those uh, reduced visibilities and, of course, those roadways that could get slippery. Now, two to five inches of snowfall is possible, mainly south, of course, as we're saying south of 94 and Highway 10. But Fargo could see zero to three inches, depending on where the northern extent of this uh, snow band ends up and we quick look at that winter weather advisory going until midnight tonight again for mainly south of the I-94 and Highway 10 corridors. But of course, Anna, coming out in a few minutes, we'll talk about timing of this wintry system and what we can expect for the all important weekend here in a few minutes. Sounds good. Thanks, Nathan. Power is slowly coming back online for thousands of customers impacted when Minnesota saw its first ever confirmed tornado in December on Wednesday night. The hardest hit city was Heartland in Freeborn County. That's just northwest of Albert Lee. One man says his two car garage ended up about a block away. I went down the basement, just a loud bang, everything went quiet and dark, and come out and the garage is gone, <laughs> and the roof is off the house. The tornado was spawned by a larger storm system that produced hurricane force winds of more than 75 miles an hour across the Great Plains and Midwest. Winds in parts of Colorado exceeded 100 miles per hour. The former Brooklyn Center police officer accused of killing Dante Wright last spring took the stand today in her own defense. Kim Potter says she meant to hit Wright with a taser that day but accidentally pulled her gun. She's on trial for manslaughter. Potter's police chief at the time she shot and killed Wright says he had no she he saw no rather violation of department policy in Potter's actions at the scene. Tim Gannon resigned as chief of Brooklyn Center Police two days after the April 11th shooting. He testified yesterday that he was forced out because he wouldn't immediately fire Potter, who resigned the same day he did. Gannon says he looked at body camera video right after the shooting and dash cam video recently, and he said he saw no violation of policy in Potter's actions at the scene. Hennepin County Sheriff Dave Hutchinson is pleading guilty to DWI in connection with a rollover crash near Alexandria on December 8th. Sheriff Hutchinson released a statement yesterday saying the incident was a wake up call for him and he understands its seriousness. He had enrolled in an outpatient treatment program to address his issues with alcohol. President Biden's nearly $2 trillion social spending and climate plan remains in limbo as Congress barrels toward holiday recess. It now looks like the legislation could be stalled until after the new year, with reports of talks breaking down between the White House and a key Senate vote. Natalie Brandt has the latest on negotiations from Capitol Hill. President Biden returned to the state that helped propel him to the White House, delivering the commencement address at Congressman Jim Clyburn's alma mater, South Carolina State University. I'm here to congratulate you, but also to let you know that your country, and this is not hyperbole, is counting on you. They're counting on you. The president and Senate Democrats are reiterating emphasis on voting rights legislation while other legislative priorities remain stalled ahead of Christmas. We must pass the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. We must. 
We're going to keep up the fight until we get it done. But to pass voting rights in the 50-50 Senate, lawmakers would likely have to make a significant rule change to move forward with just a simple majority. Changing the structure of the Senate in order to try to achieve a partisan advantage is a mistake for the Senate and a mistake for the country. Some moderate Democrats have also expressed reluctance to change the Senate's filibuster rules. Just because Republicans will not join us does not mean Democrats will stop fighting on this issue. As for the plan to pass the Democratic Social Spending and Climate Bill before leaving for the holidays, the White House acknowledges that likely won't happen until next year. In a statement, the president said he and his team are continuing to have discussions with West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, a key Democratic vote, but a source familiar tells CBS News those talks have been going poorly with the two Democrats far apart. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The Senate parliamentarian has also ruled against including an immigration provision to the social spending bill that would have allowed undocumented immigrants to apply for work permits and protections from deportation. With the holidays here, there are plenty of Christmas traditions that you may have, but today we all get to enjoy a classic. Today is Ugly Christmas Sweater Day. Love them or hate them, they're here for the holidays. It's observed every year on the third Friday of December since 2011. The day has become a tradition of its own. In recent years, National Ugly Christmas Sweater Day has expanded to almost everywhere. The Omicron variant is now in 38 states. What experts are saying about the level of sickness surrounding it still to come on Valley News Live at noon. But next, the weather to plan your day. Stay with us.